Yes. Today, I've gotten all of my steps and probably reached a new record of active minutes. Hello, my name is Dr. Clemens Müller, and I welcome you to the webinar Sensor-Based Technology Meets Physical Therapy. The digital revolution has enabled us or used to make us of sensor-based technologies in different forms. Nowadays, we encounter several sensor-based technologies in daily life, like the activity monitoring system on my wrist. Basically, sensor-based technologies devices are defined as devices that measures or detects a real-world condition, such as motion, heat, or light, and converts the condition into an analog or digital representation. Besides acting as activity monitors in the domain of health and wellness, sensor-based technologies are also integrated in other fields of application. For example, they can be used as disease management tools by recording what happens between outpatient visits. Thus, treatment interventions can be fine-tuned to the needs of the individual patients. In addition, they can be used in fall or seizure detection. Imagine a sensor on a chest strap which de detects faults while it monitors heart rate, skin temperature, sleep-wake patterns, and activity levels. Or these devices can be used as simple emergency response devices consisting of a push, push button. By pressing the button, one has the ability to wirelessly relay an, an alarm message to operators at remote call centers. Another application could be monitoring patients with dementia, systems which assist these patients with remembering daily activities and monitoring daily behavior for early signs of de degradation can allow patients to live independently longer. Today, we want to focus on one additional area where the application field increases significantly. For home, outpatient and inpatient settings, sensor-based technologies are used for rehabilitation purposes. Let's take a closer look at rehabilitation settings. Owing to increased healthcare costs, a demographic change seeing, and increased number of patients and infrastructural restriction might lead to a shift towards an increased importance of home and outpatient rehabilitation. Especially in this growing rehabilitation field, sensor-based technologies play an essential role in three main areas. Providing quality care to those in areas with reduced access to providers, maximizing the independence and participation of increasing number of individuals with disabilities, and being an affordable option for a growing number of individuals who are seeking care. It, also, it is also expected that sensor-based technology will play a central role in linking outpatient settings and home rehabilitation. To understand better the integration and application of such technologies, we have invited Professor Annick Timmermans. She investigates the use of te technological systems for enriched rehabilitation environments in the hospital and at home for patients with musculoskeletal problems. She has been involved in rehabilitation technology development through collaboration with companies and through collaborations with universities. She has developed technology-supported training concepts, has conducted randomized clinical trials to evaluate the effectiveness of technology-supported rehabilitation, and is a member of several international scientific networks on and societies. One of her recent publications is about interactive variable systems for upper body rehabilitation. So it's now my pleasure to welcome Professor Timmermans. Hello, Professor Timmermans. Nice to have you here to join our Hello. webinar as a guest speaker. Hope you're doing good. I'm doing fine, Dr. Miller, and thank you very much for the very nice introduction. Great. So maybe also coming back to this publication and, and also to your experience with a lot of uh, sensor-based technology devices and, uh, and, and applications. Uh, you have also brought some materials, some videos, a compilation of different technologies, which we can also show now uh, to the audience. Maybe can I ask you to comment or explain a little bit the technologies we will see in the next uh, couple of uh, seconds and minutes? Sure. This is a Riablo, which comprises of wireless sensors that are attached to 
the body through Velcro straps and that are used together with a pressure board to steer a motivating game environment. Uh, the focus of the system is on exercises to train controlled hip and knee movements movements and to learn partial weight bearing and balance. The next system is tactile, where any everyday life object can be RFID tagged to be handled in combination with one up to three interactive exercise boards from Symbiotherapy. This is VMOVE, where wireless inertial sensors and EMG sensors from the firm uh, Dorsavi can be attached to the patient's skin to monitor movement and muscle activity at the low back region. Feedback is here given on excessive or repeated end range position, reduced or augmented muscle activation in the low back, and this is mostly a feedback device. This is Armeo Senso from ETH, where inertial measurement units are placed at the trunk and upper extremity to steer games that are played on a touch screen computer. The system coaches through a sequence of reaching exercises. The workspace in which the patient practices can be pre-selected according to the proficiency level of the user. And that's a quite important feature in order to enable patients to train in a safe environment where control of scapulothoracic unit is possible, because otherwise uh, shoulder problems may occur. Whitman et al. have published a study where subjects were using the system independently in their homes for six weeks with which showed that uh, there was a high compliance rate and a good improvement uh, amongst others on Fugelmeier scores. This is Nintendo Wii, uh, which we has been evaluated in several clinical trials for patients with CP, elderly with balance problems um, and after stroke, and also recently for orthopedic problems such as low back pain, knee surgery and shoulder impingement problems. There is some positive trial evidence for the improvement of function level and motivation during training in selected patient categories, like for example, balance for elderly or range of motion in shoulder problems. This is Valedo Motion, a system from Hokoma where wireless sensors attached to the patient's skin measure movements of the trunk and pelvis to steer games and feedback interfaces. Strong features are the interactive gaming environment that invites for movement repetition of correct pelvic tilt movements in different movement planes. And it also comprises of games that that give feedback on the ability to keep the lumbar spine stable during movements of the upper and lower extremities, which can be functional tasks. In a clinical pilot trial that uh, my colleague Thomas Mateva has performed, it was found that Valedo is a feasible system to use during rehabilitation in the hospital and at home, and that results with uh, regard to the improvement of pain and disability are promising. Oh, that sounds really good. So thanks for this uh, explanation. Uh, you already mentioned that there are some clinical evidence with some publications. You also did some, some trials. So what is in general the clinical evidence of uh, sensor-based technology in rehabilitation? So how would you describe it? Um, well, we, we did this. Um, we did two systematic reviews, and uh, one was on um, sensor systems for low back pain, which was done by uh, my PhD student Thomas Mateva, and um, he found that um, actually the evidence to date showed that technology-supported rehabilitation of in low back pain was giving very good outcomes for the improvement of uh, pain and disability. Mm -hmm. um, it was also shown that technology. Um, use in combination with standard therapy had an additional value over uh, standard therapy alone, but we did find that um, uh, there was no, it's not sufficient evidence yet for proving that technology had uh, more of benefits than other interventions. And we think one of the reasons is that current technologies are still using quite analytical approaches, uh, where I think with the current upcoming technologies, a big difference can be made as, as functional training can be uh, used in combination with sensor technologies. Okay, so you... And there was also the other, yeah. So you see a big potential then, right, for uh, increasing uh, the, the, the sensor-based technology in, in, in the market, in the field, if the application is going more uh, in, into, into this direction, right? So there's still some, some space for improvements. Right. Okay. And... Uh, um, yes. Yeah. So uh, also uh, you also mentioned uh, some, some target groups, some patient groups during the explanation. So uh, could you also summarize this a little bit for which patient uh, does it make sense uh, to use such sensor-based uh, technologies? 
Um, yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, at, at this moment, most of the evidence is for neurological patients. So sensor-based technologies have mm -hmm. been used more in patients after stroke, CP, NMS. Um, and within this category, the majority was stroke patients. But uh, also now systems are emerging for musculoskeletal problems such as low back pain, hip, knee, and shoulder problems. But yeah, they are less in number uh, as they are more recent uh, at this moment. Okay. So you also mentioned uh, it, is, it helps also to reduce a little bit the pain for some patients. Uh, so, but in general, um, the benefits of such sensor-based technologies, also in terms of motor learning, do you also see some, some potential there? Uh, how, do, uh, how are these technologies we also have seen in the, in, in the video, in the video compilation, support motor learning? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I see a huge potential there. Um, first of all, they, they all invite for movement repetition and we know the more uh, we repeat movements, the better uh, patients learn, whether they are stroke patients or musculoskeletal patients with low back pain. That is that is proven in, in quite some uh, mm -hmm. literature uh, surveys. Um, also, uh, I think a big benefit from sensor technologies for motor learning is that they can teach correct movement performance while allowing the patient to master redundant degrees of freedom in real life contexts. Um, and this is also what happens in daily life. So therefore, I expect uh, that uh, in future clinical trials, big transfer can be used to everyday life activities. And okay. I, I also... Hmm? So, so you, you see uh, specifically the, the, the repetition as well as the feedback as, as, key, as key factors uh, uh, for, uh, for sensor-based uh, technologies, right? So that's like the, the, the key elements which supports uh, uh, successful recovery. Yes, but especially with the sensor systems um, that have sensors um, close to the joints or close to a body area, I think mm -hmm. they are very well placed to measure what is happening and to give very accurate feedback or mm -hmm. to um, almost demand correct movements to happen. So the closer the, the sensors are to the target area, the better. Like, for example, um, I liked very much in Armeo Sensor that they use a trunk sensor and a sensor on the upper limb so that patients cannot compensate with the trunk uh, to, to reach their goals or uh, in Valet that you have sensors in the target game on the above and the below vertebrae of the lumbar spines. So you can really control what happens in that lumbar spine. I think uh, in Riablo also, there for the knee, there is a sensor above and below the knee. So these are very strong features that enable very um, accurate feedback and that also can ask from the patient to do the correct movements to steer a gaming environment. And I, I think that is key. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. for motor learning. Um, is, is it also uh, regarding the, the feedback? You mentioned the feedback is very precise. So I also assume you can also do a, a lot of assessments, really, to assess the movement and the capability of the patient. Would this also help, really, to trigger, really, the, the, the therapy plan, the, the, the difficulty of the therapy plan, which movements the, the patient needs to do and to, to steer this really with, with such sensor-based technologies? Do you also see there a, a benefit? Absolutely. So I think that is uh, the, the future we should go to, um, that we can uh, use technologies in home settings where uh, customized therapy is, is give, given to the patient according to their progress and according to their current status. Um, I, I think sensors can do that. We have a study that um, uh, we hope it will be published soon where we use um, uh, inertial sensors from uh, the valued motion system to actually uh, uh, measure the motor control in the lumbar spine during functional tasks. And we see that, for example, for standing bow and um, uh, for coming from sit to stance, um, lifting a box, that the reliability of these sensors are quite good for measuring. So in future systems, if we could have closed loop systems that measure while patients are performing the movements, that would be an extremely strong feature to actually um, determine which exercises they would have to do and whether we have to progress the exercise schemes. 
Yeah. So this would be also in line with the slides we have presented at the beginning, so that there's also a trend towards more outpatient setting, home rehabilitation, where the, the sensor-based technology could be then really a benefit uh, also to increase the intensity of the, the therapy also at home and that the, the therapist can really monitor uh, what was done and also tailor then the, 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 the whole therapy program over the weeks and months, right? Right, that's uh, that's correct, um, because we know that home exercises are very crucial. Uh, it doesn't; it's not sufficient that patients come to a therapist a few times a week. They need to practice at home to use their potential. Yes, and um, I, I really see a, a very big um, future there for supporting patients because we do see now that uh, one of the most important reasons of non-compliance is that patients uh, forget correct exercise instructions but also that they lack support that they don't feel supported by the therapist in a distance or um, while well, they, they know that their uh, performance is not monitored okay great so, so i think sensor systems could play a good role yeah i i see the point so uh what would you um, tell a, a clinician or a therapist who uh, wants to integrate or to apply sensor-based technologies in their clinical routine? What do they need to consider? What's really important? Uh, any suggestions from your side? Uh, any tips, any recommendations which they need to consider in advance? Sure. Um, we, we've done a trial with the tactile system that you saw before in um, Atlanta Rehabilitation Center in the Netherlands, where we asked therapists to use the system. And very important uh, issues there that uh, came along is that therapists want to know uh, before they start using the system, which is the strength and the opportunity of the system. What is the additional value to the therapy program? What what is in there for my patients? They um, and I think their RCT evidence uh, is very can be very informative. It's something that therapists really want to know before they engage in using technologies. And uh, furthermore, um, therapists have limited time, um, so. It, it's very important for them to know how much time does it cost to start up a system. It should be easy mm -hmm. to start up and adjust exercises. Um, it should be easy to learn and not only for the therapists, also for patients because where it can really make a difference is that if therapists spend the time to teach a patient how the system works, that only makes sense if they can easily use it at home. Um, so that's very important. And they will want to know if it's robust. Uh, therapists are uh, not uh, people with technologic, lots of technological background. I'll speak for myself. And um, I, they want to know that it works and that they don't, they don't have surprises. And a very strong feature that it can be customized to the patient as much as possible. So content of exercise programs, the volume, the workspace, even the feedback, if that could be customized to the level of the user, they will be very interested. Okay, so uh, to individualize it according to the abilities, the, the motor abilities, as well as the cognitive abilities of the patient, right? So, uh, Professor Timmermans, thanks uh, for the first part of this, uh, of this uh, webinar where you joined us. Uh, you will be later also available during the question and answer session. So thanks really for your contribution. Sure. Uh, we will see us later during the question and answer session. Welcome. Thank you very much. See you later. See you later. Thanks, bye. It's also now my pleasure to introduce our second guest speaker, Professor Andreas Luft. Uh, he's a neurologist and a clinical scientist, a professor at Zurich University and medical director at Cerineo. He also runs the Stroke Center at the University Hospital of Zurich, and he's known internationally for his research in the field of neurorehabilitation. So welcome, Professor Luft. So, Professor Luft, uh, thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, can you hear me? Is it yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, uh, th uh, thanks for joining. Um, you have also brought some material, right? Some, uh, some, some uh, material about your clinics, uh, material about your project works. And I would also like you to ask or to, to uh, to ask you to give us a little bit more information about the projects. I will run these slides, the material you have uh, brought us, and uh, maybe you can also comment and explain a little bit 
about your projects and works uh, about it. Yes, my pleasure. So maybe you can start the, the videos. So we are combining acute and rehabilitation care, going from the University Hospital in Zurich to uh, the Serenao Center for Neurology and Rehabilitation with our studies, being able to look at patients from the very beginning, just after the stroke to later time points, going uh, to up to several years. And we have been using a lot of technology. You see, for example, our gate lab up here on the uh, upper left image. Um, the, uh, our therapeutic concepts are based on measuring and being informed about the effect of our therapies, which are conducted with the greatest possible intensity. Uh, the major obstacles to intensity, are, of course, um, the motivation of the patient as well as uh, of the therapist, um, besides comorbidities and the initial deficit of the patient. But if you're trying to um, maximize the compliance and thereby the intensity of a training, we um, make intensive use of uh, sensor-based technology, which allows us to measure, for example, the performance of a patient walking on a treadmill, but also uh, of a patient walking in daily life, um, where we are not only measuring the quantity of movement, but also the quality. You can see in the uh, upper right here, uh, a uh, sensor-based suit uh, with uh, 17 sensors that are uh, located in different body parts that allow us uh, to reconstruct the um, entire uh, Manica and get specific motor quality, movement quality data uh, about gait, but also about arm function while the subject is performing in daily life. And this information can then be fed back to the patient to show improvement, thereby creating the motivation to, to train further and harder. But it also, of course, informs the clinician of whether a specific training approach is useful, uh, necessary, or needs to be changed if the patient does not respond. We are intensively using sensors also as parts of specific training uh, regimen or protocols in okay. which we interact, the patient interacts with uh, a computer-based system via those sensors and gets immediate feedback about his or her performance, thereby performing, for example, precision movements and training them in high intensity. Okay, so you also mentioned that, and I think that's also in line with what Professor Timmermans uh, mentioned before, that intensity is really also key in, in uh, a key factor in rehabilitation. And again, that uh, feedback and motivation is uh, are really some, some crucial uh, parts. Maybe you can go a little bit more into detail because you're also an expert in the field of feedback rewarding. So uh, why is feedback and rewarding so important for, for a lot of patients uh, to get really yeah. the best outcome and to recover for them? Let's, let's stick with intensity first. So mm -hmm. what we know, what is, could be called clinical evidence in stroke rehabilitation uh, to date is that uh, intensity counts and makes the biggest change, the biggest predictor on uh, therapeutic effect size. Uh, so maximizing intensity is our primary goal in our uh, clinic in Switzerland. Uh, and the major obstacles to maximizing intensity it, in practice is the patient, him or herself, which who lacks the motivation to uh, undergo such intensive training. Uh, you can compare that to uh, a professional athlete. So the patient has to become a professional athlete and train several hours a day. Um, a movement deficit, but then other deficits also come into play and needs, need to be trained. So the patient has to completely change the lifestyle and become a professional athlete to, uh, to recover. And uh, uh, several measures are necessary to stimulate that compliance with intensive therapy. And one major aspect is, is uh, feedback 
uh, feedback about the progress itself. Most patients don't realize their own progress and need to get information, need to be informed about how well they become because they often don't see their, their own pro progress, which may happen slow. They may uh, be depressed after a stroke, not seeing their own um, abilities, or they may, on the other hand, overestimate their own abilities. That can also happen. So this type of information feedback is necessary. Now, we are also uh, working on reward, so information that creates a reward for the patient, uh, in which we stimulate centers in the brain, reward centers in the brain, that are known to stimulate or help the plasticity in uh, the motor cortex. Uh, we have shown that in animal models. And by stimulating these reward centers, we hope to improve the effect of training therapies that are based on uh, neuroplasticity. And uh, the form of the reward can come, of course, or has to often comes from sensor-based information sources. Okay, great. So uh, talking maybe uh, uh, about uh, an another topic, uh, I've also uh, asked this Professor Timmermans, and we have also seen this in some slides before, that probably in the future there's a trend towards more home rehabilitation outpatient setting. Uh, do you agree with this statement? Do you also see this trend in rehabilitation that these settings and these fields are also getting much more important in the future with a higher amount of, of patients? Yes, absolutely. I mean, currently, when we, again, talking about intensity, the amount of uh, therapy a patient receives after leaving a rehabilitation hospital uh, as an inpatient is very, very limited uh, because of patient transport and logistical issues, but also because of therapy availability and ther therapist availability. And uh, if we have... I don't see that we have any functioning um, tele-rehab systems so far, but if we have systems that um, the patient can use at home, that would, of course, be very helpful. Now, it is certainly not enough to uh, just give the patient homework, uh, providing them with a uh, computer program or an instruction manual, because compliance over time will not be sufficient. These systems need to be monitored and supervised from a distance, and that's what you would call tele-rehabilitation. And uh, that is, uh, I think, for the next five to ten years to develop, because it carries a huge potential uh, that uh, not only can further improve patients after inpatient rehabilitation, but maybe also shorten inpatient rehabilitation length of stay and thereby cost. Okay, so this is where you see also the role of sensor-based technologies in the future to support in terms of tele-rehabilitation, to increase the intensity, um, and also then also to have some, some kind of monitoring aspect for the, for the clinicians. Yes. And so, that yeah. is so you have to... Yeah, yeah, one has to... I think one can differentiate three purposes where in tele-rehab sensor-based technology can play a role. Number one is as an assessment technology. What we are using now in inpatient rehabilitation um, is uh, together with the patient. The patient comes, is seen by a therapist, and we do assessments, mm -hmm. similar to the neurological exam for that every neurologist does. Uh, so sensors can provide a way to assess the patient while the patient is at home, not in the hospital. This, has, this is difficult because the setting has to be comparable in order to compare those assessments. They have to be standardized, but I think that can be solved. The second uh, objective would be to monitor the patient in daily life. Um, what uh, uh, we have seen in our studies and what was displayed on the slide that um, I showed you before was that if you monitor a patient with the sensor suit during daily life and compare that daily life monitoring to an assessment with respect to, for example, range of motion in the upper extremity, you see substantial differences. The patient performs better in the assessment uh, than in daily life, or they're not using their full capacity in daily life. And uh, this type of monitoring carries a lot of additional 
information, especially when you look at the transition from the activity ICF domain to the participation ICF domain, so what the patient really can use in daily life. So they can provide additional information that we don't have available to date. And the objective number three would be really to assist uh, training in um, computer-enhanced games that are controlled by sensors, for example, but we don't have to restrict sensor technology only to, to movement and motor rehabilitation. One could also think about cognitive rehabilitation and speech rehabilitation, language rehabilitation. Of, that would require, of course, different sensors than uh, IMU-based acceleration and gyroscopes. Okay. So uh, are you also using some uh, sensor-based technologies in your clinic? And if so, what is also the, the feedback of the patients, right? So now we talked also uh, a lot of the, yeah. the, the, the clinical perspective, but how do they perceive uh, such technologies? Do you have any, yeah. any information about this? Yeah, in, in the Serenio clinic, every patient gets an activity monitor and uh, uh, as well as uh, IMU sensors that tell us a little bit about motor quality. So we mm -hmm. measure activity and we measure very few aspects of movement quality. And no patient so far has complained about using these sensors. The, the, the major problem is in routine how to uh, uh, convince or how to not um, to prevent that the patient or the nurses forget to put and place the sensors or recover the data. Uh, that's, that's the major obstacle. The second obstacle, of course, is uh, what to do with the data. And as we are a research uh, hospital, um, or we're doing a lot of research, we are now, we have a, a working group that only focuses on analyzing the amounts of data that come out of these, these sensors in order to find parameters that are useful for controlling therapies, controlling and measuring progress. Uh, so, yes, we are using sensors, but we are still in uh, the very beginning and we are certainly not using them to, to their full potential, at least their full theoretical potential to date. Okay. So, uh also, thanks uh, to you, uh, Professor Luft, uh, for your contribution and for your part of, of the webinar. Please stay in the line. Uh, in, in the lane. Uh, we will continue in a couple of seconds with the question and answer sessions by, by the audience. Uh, so, uh, uh, see you in a couple of seconds. To summarize a little bit the content of the, the webinar, sensor systems for rehabilitation have emerged in the last decade, as we have heard. Since these technological developments are uh, still relatively new, clinical evidence exists but is still sparse. And sensor systems support motor learning of upper and lower limb movements, as well as posture in neurological, as well as, as musculoskeletal disorders. So thanks to all of you for joining the webinar about uh, sensor-based technology meets physical therapy. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Uh, keep in mind our next webinar will be about pediatric rehabilitation in a couple of uh, weeks and months. Uh, we will like to inform you. So thanks for joining and see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>